Hello and welcome to the latest video in this series recorded for 24 hour answers where we look at becoming a better programmer. This time we're going to be building upon the work that we've done previously, specifically that with lists and structs. If you can't remember or haven't seen those videos you should go back now instead and watch them, not least because the starting point for this video is going to be where we got the code to at the end of last time. We're actually going to be looking at two very simple algorithms. The first is going to be a searching algorithm and the second a sorting algorithm. Neither of these are going to be particularly efficient or advanced, but over the next few videos we'll look at refining them further. So let's get started on our searching algorithm. I'm going to declare a function here. It's going to return a list item, which is the one we're searching for, and we'll call it find. And what we'll want to do is find any item that has a value um, equal to the input. So very simply, we're going to make a function and that function will return a struct, which is our list item. And it will return the first one it finds that has a, d a data value equal to this search data. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just copy this to make the method down here beneath our link from last time. And we can also copy this loop that we used. Um, and what we also want to do is to be able to access our list. So we want list item first. So that's going to be the first item in our list, which is how you might uh, pass around your list. And we'll do, use a pointer for just to make sure that we keep uh, these different uh, concepts and skills fresh. So we want to say first list item is going to be equal to first. And we're going to iterate through all of these until we find uh, a null in the next uh, position. So what we want to do is match any of these um, items. So if i data, which is our integer, is equal to search data, we can leave now and return i. And that will return our list item. And in fact, let's use pointers for the whole system here just to be uh, consistent. So there is our uh, completed function header and here's our method and if we don't find anything that way by using pointers we can return null rather than any other value. So just to test this now we can uh, remove or we'll comment out this code which we were just using to print and we'll link the items from last time as A, B and C because if you remember we had reversed those at the end of the last video and now we'll try calling um, calling our find so we'll say um, list item star value equals find and our search data will go on the one that's four and we will pass in A which was the first element in our little uh, our little list of items A, B and C which have values two, four and six so we should be getting B back here and remember that the linking has been done here in this link method I'll just remove, uh, just hide that there and what we can do is we can test if value is null display an error otherwise now we'll just go over that logic um, we're checking if value comes out null from find that's because if we ever do have uh, an item in our list that is equal to search data we'll get that item and so it won't be null and we'll say value found otherwise we will indeed get our null and we'd get the could not find value message. So we should be able to test that now. Uh, oh, of course, we need to pass in our 
pointer, I believe, first, because uh, a, a up here is just a struct and not a pointer to a struct, so we want the re memory reference of it. And there we go, I should have put a new line in, but uh, value found, press any key to continue. And to prove the point, put our new lines in. We'll try putting in a three, and we'll run it. And here we get our could not find value. Uh, now again, because we're looking at more of a computer science uh, aspect and rather than C programming specifically, um, let's consider the worst case uh, for this find algorithm. Well, clearly the worst case is that we cannot find any value matching search data, in which case we will go through every item in the list, and remember that could be a very large uh, array of items, and it will have to do the comparison for each one. So if you had a million uh, items in your list, of course you'd be doing a million comparisons, which could take quite a lot of time, um, even more so for even larger lists. On the other hand, this is quite a good algorithm if the, f if the item that we're searching for is the very first or in the first few items, as we'll be doing very few comparisons. But it becomes less and less good the further in that our desired search data is in the list. If it's right at the end, then it's almost as many, or rather it's exactly the same number of comparisons as it would have to do if there was no item at all. Again, in the big list, that's a lot. So uh, we'll be looking at more advanced algorithms that can cut down this time um, and we'll be doing that in the next few videos. And I think to avoid this video being too long um, because our sort is going to be fairly complicated if you're not too uh, familiar with the subject, uh, we'll stop here. Any questions about this simple find, um, by all means post below and I'll try and get back to you. Thank you.